I'm here in Jersey on the east side in the parish of St. Martin and just 14 miles that way is the coast of France or more particularly the uh, Cotentin Peninsula of Normandy. Two weeks ago Jersey was in the news because of a massive fishing dispute and whilst a lot of people from the mainland UK and a lot of news sources have been talking about this dispute I would like to share my views as someone from Jersey about what this dispute means to us, how it's affected us and more generally uh, the dispute from Jersey's point of view. Before I get started the main thing I want to say and, and the main thing that I would like you to take away from this if you uh, aren't from Jersey, if you're from the UK or from Europe, in the description I put a list of, uh, a, a list of um, news sources uh, about this dispute before it became mainstream news, before the, the gunships and the protests by French fishermen. And I would highly recommend that you, you, you look through those uh, news articles and try and understand this dispute from Jersey's perspective. Now, another thing I would really like to clarify and that a lot of people um, who have only heard about Jersey uh, a couple of weeks ago and are now on the internet claiming to be experts, uh, a lot of them don't actually understand, is that Jersey isn't a part of the United Kingdom. It's a, a crown dependency. Now, um, if you don't know what that means, it basically means that Jersey is an autonomous region um, of Britain. It's not a part of the United Kingdom of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, but it is um, it's under the jurisdiction of the crown. It's a bit complicated, but all you need to understand that it's not a part of the United Kingdom. And so that meant that when the United Kingdom joined the European Union, Jersey and our sister island of Guernsey, another crown dependency, as well as the Isle of Man, another crown dependency, didn't join the European Union. Now, so that's that's one thing that you, you have to understand, that we weren't part of the European Union. And also during the 2016 uh, British referendum on leaving the European Union, people in Jersey weren't allowed to vote. So a lot of the consequences of Britain leaving the European Union, we had absolutely no say in at all. We need to understand is, uh, and especially a lot of British patriots saying, oh, get the French out of our waters, is that the French fishermen have been fishing in Jersey waters uninterrupted, or mostly uninterrupted, since the Napoleonic Wars uh, 200 years ago. So they've been fishing in our waters for quite a long time, um, completely in the agreement of the British government and the local government. We've been sharing our local waters. So you might be wondering, why is this an issue now? Well, you see, that agreement was formalised under the Granville Bay Treaty, which formalised that uh, French fishing vessels were able to fish in Jersey waters um, unimpeded and that we shared these waters because they've been using these waters for such a long time. However, the first issue with the Granville Bay Treaty that a lot of fishermen weren't very happy with is that the French fishing vessels that came into Jersey waters were far larger far more industrial, you could say, massive trawlers that took up a lot of fish and generally harvest more fish than local Jersey vessels did. And the main concern with this is that um, the, the French fishing vessels were depleting local fishing stocks. So a, a major point of this dispute, which again is not really reported on and um, this is a rather unfortunate aspect of the fishing dispute in Jersey is that it's kind of become a, a, a battleground of the debate about Brexit of Brexiteers versus Europhiles and such and the main core of the problem is being completely ignored and that is is that the restrictions which the French are uh, currently protesting about mainly comes down to the concern of dredging uh, and and heavy trawlers are overfishing Jersey waters and this isn't environmentally sustainable 
and so certain measures are being implemented uh, to maintain uh, ecological sustainability of Jersey's aquatic life, which is absolute, absolutely essential to the survival of Jersey and also French fishermen. So the long talked about plans, which frankly, um, the, the French have known about for uh, quite some time now, was announced that tracking be required as a condition of license, which by the way, um, is guaranteed under the UK-EU trade agreement under fishing article, I think it's fish.5.2. Yeah, under fish.5.2 of the UK-EU trade agreement um, guarantees that vessels have to adhere to the conditions of their license. And this condition being that uh, French vessels need to implement tracking devices, uh, GPS and such, uh, on their vessels in order to monitor the effect that they have on local sea life, in order to uh, preserve the sea life that we have, to keep it um, environmentally and ecologically sustainable. So because of Brexit, the, uh, our local fishermen saw the opportunity to renegotiate, or at the very least, uh, scrap the Granville Bay Treaty and renegotiate uh, what the Jersey fishermen would like to see as a more equal fishing agreement, where Jersey fishermen would be able to have more control over Jersey waters to fish as much as they want, whilst also um, being still on friendly terms with French fishermen. So in December, under rather short notice, the government panicked that they, they hadn't uh, negotiated a separate deal with the EU like our sister island of Guernsey had done and also like the Isle of Man was wishing to do in, in, in having a separate terms of agreement with the EU. Um, our government, very typical of them, decided just to blindly follow the line of the British government and signed the uh, EU trade agreement, um, the, the UK EU trade agreement. So in this agreement, it was decided that Jersey would have full control over its territorial waters. So you'll probably be wondering, how did it get to the point of British Navy vessels and French fishermen blockading ports and talks of war and cutting off, off uh, electricity? Well, back in December, when Jersey signed up to this agreement, uh, they clearly stated that um, there would be a certain amount of time in which French fishermen would be allowed to uh, apply for licenses and there would be an amnesty period where French fishing vessels could continue to, to fish in Jersey waters um, and then after a certain point they would have these licenses issued to them. Now this worked, um, although the road was quite bumpy um, every now and again, the French would say that there's not been enough time for them to be given their uh, licenses and um, the French banned Jersey fishermen from landing their catch in French ports. Now, this will come up uh, later because it's quite important that Jersey fishermen have to land about 90% of their catch in French ports. So banning um, Jersey fishermen fishermen, or at the very least physically pre preventing them from landing their catch in French ports would, would, was quite a, an efficient measure uh, and leverage to force the Jersey government to allow a longer amnesty period to allow for more licenses to be given out. Now, um, to be completely fair to the complaints of the French fishermen, um, the rather slow and clumsy nature of the Jersey government is quite well known amongst local uh, people who have had to deal with the government's, uh, let's say, controversial dealing of the coronavirus pandemic and other issues which the government has 
uh, mishandled over the past couple of years. So I completely understand that uh, the French fishermen were, were quite uh, appalled and frustrated that the licenses weren't being given out um, fast enough. However, that did mean that they, they used quite a lot of aggressive tactics in order for, <clears throat> in order for this amnesty period to be extended. Um, I, th I think it was one month and then two months and then three months and so on and so forth throughout the um, early part of 2021. Worryingly, during the amnesty period, there were reports that large French fishing vessels were using the amnesty period to fish as much as possible out of fear that in the future they won't be allowed to use Jersey's waters anymore. And this uh, aggressive, um, environmentally unsustainable form of fishing uh, further raised concerns in Jersey. Additionally, it, it was known that French fishing vessels were uh, damaging or destroying Jersey fishing equipment. However, the Jersey government has been very lenient in extending its amnesty policy um, of allowing fishing vessels to continue fishing in Jersey waters whilst they sort out the licensing scheme. In fact, a local Jersey fisherman, Chris Le Missouria, um, has made a number of comments complaining about the inefficiencies of the Jersey government, not only to communicate with local Jersey fishermen about everything from what Jersey fishermen have to do uh, post-Brexit, but also their inability to communicate with uh, our French counterparts, which, as I said, in all fairness to uh, the French fishermen, I wouldn't really put it past our government to uh, not be very good in uh, communication and uh, coordination of what is required of French fishermen. Though I would like to clarify, despite me saying French fishermen do this, French fishermen do that, um, they're not all bad people. It's the same case with any group of people. A lot of French fishermen, if you actually um, read through interviews that they've given to various news stations, just say that they're confused, they're worried, they're frightened for their future and their financial stability. And I'm sure a lot of them do want dialogue. That's why they came into um, St. Helier Harbour and wanted to engage with um, the Jersey government and they have engaged in conversation with Jersey fishermen. Now, as I said before, this debate has become uh, a part of the polarised um, discussion on Brexit by Europhiles and Brexiteers. And I would like to address um, both sides' commentary on this issue. And I would like to start off with uh, Brexiteers saying, um, or at the very least, supporting Boris Johnson by sending the, the British Navy to Jersey to teach them frogs a lesson. And... Interestingly enough, I find this sentiment quite disgusting, actually, because it was Boris Johnson and his Conservative Party in London that wanted to unconstitutionally and illegally seize control of Jersey's territorial waters, which London Parliament isn't allowed to do, and then surrender it, give it up, basically, to the French, so that the rest of the UK would be able to get a better trade deal. So essentially, they, uh, Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party wanted to throw Jersey under the bus. I have to say, despite the, the, the British Navy's vessels being sent to Jersey, um, I wouldn't really consider the Conservative Party uh, government in London to be trustworthy friends of the island of Jersey. Also, the... Um, the, the, the British Navy vessels coming over to, I don't know, battle it out, like Trafalgar. This isn't actually the first time that Jersey has become a sort of battleground between uh, ourselves and French sailors. In fact, in, in 1993, due to a very similar uh, disagreement, they engaged in kidnapping. So when they were caught, when a number of vessels were caught uh, illegally fishing um, in Jersey waters, they kidnapped uh, sea patrol inspectors and held them hostage and took them back to France. 
And because of this very dangerous behavior, the British sent uh, a number of um, Navy vessels down to Jersey. And uh, one of them ran aground off Alderney and was put out of action. And the other one was commandeered by a group of French fishermen who boarded the ship, forced the, uh, the, the crew below deck, and then sailed the boat over to France. Um, so think of that of what you will. Boris has sent in the Royal Navy to send those belligerent garlic munchers back to Frogland with their fucking tails between their legs. Quite right too. Something that a lot of Brexiteers, British nationalists don't understand when they say, oh, just stop the French from fishing in our waters. Um, because nobody in Jersey wants that. Because, uh, as I said, 90% of uh, the fish that Jersey fishermen catch is sold to, to France. So the issue is, is that we can't realistically say that French fishermen can't fish in our waters, we don't want anything to do with them, we don't want them to be here, because we, at the same time, rely on them to be able to sell our produce to them. So it's, it's something that, that, that goes both ways. Now, as for the uh, Europhiles saying that um, France is in the right here, now, I'm no lawyer, um, so, I can't speak to the claims as as to whether or not Jersey um, violated the uh, UK EU trade agreement. As I said, the conditions of GPS tracking, I personally believe, aren't in violation of the trade agreement. And I think it is sad that Europhiles in Britain are taking the side of um, rather militaristic nationalists over a small island that's just trying to do its best to uh, maintain ecological balance in its waters and doing its best to maintain the environmental welfare of its island. So essentially because of our concern for the ecological well-being of our island and our waters, uh, French nationalists thought it was appropriate that they would threaten to cut off the electricity to our island. Eh bien, ces mesures de rétention, nous sommes prêts à les utiliser. L'Europe, la France a des moyens. C'est inscrit dans l'accord. Alors, en ce qui concerne Jersey, je rappellerai par exemple le transport d'électricité par câble sous-marin. Et donc, nous avons des moyens. Et même si je regrette, si on devait en y, arri y arriver, eh bien. And also to ban Jersey fishermen from landing their catch in French ports, which, by the way, if France is going to accuse us of violating the EU-UK trade agreement, refusing uh, the landed catch in ports is a violation of the EU-UK trade agreement. Now, none of this would have happened if Jersey decided to choose its own fate, like uh, the island of Guernsey and the Isle of Man decided to do, and come to our own agreement with the EU, which may have been better than the Treaty of Granville Bay. It might have been just the same, it might have been what we wanted, it might not. But in rushing to join the UK-EU trade deal, it robbed Jersey of a certain degree of autonomy and a certain degree of agency in relying on the UK to negotiate um, much of the uh, agreement. Now, another issue is uh, the matter of bureaucracy. As I said, um, our government hasn't been too good in communication either with Jersey fishermen or with French fishermen. Now, a lot of communication has to go from Jersey to London to Brussels, uh, to London to Jersey, or even from Jersey to London to Brussels to Paris. Um, so there's been a lot of issues with communication. Now, this is not at all helped by the fact that um, the French government has, or the, or the regional French government in Normandy and Brittany have closed their communication offices um, in Jersey. Whilst, yes, it's true to say that 
these waters are Jersey's waters. It's also true to say that for 200 years and, and probably longer, Je uh, French fishermen have relied on Jersey waters for their living just as much as Jersey's fishermen have. And this really speaks to the, I think recently in the news, the unspoken connection between Jersey and France or even the Channel Islands in France. Now, Jersey has a Francophone identity and a Norman identity. Now, I personally see myself as a Norman and my grandfather spoke French and uh, many of my ancestors spoke French or at the very least uh, the uh, Norman patois of Gerier, which is very similar to French. I think it's sad that a lot of French officials are uh, very insistent of calling this island English or British uh, without recognizing that actually they, they can engage with us beyond um, the overlook of London. And I think it's sad that the, the French are trying to, to push us away um, when all we're trying to do is set out a list of conditions to licenses, which I'll say once again is guaranteed under the trade agreement, that just monitors and maintains a sustainable amount of fishing for French fishermen. We're, we're not trying to um, restrict them for them to go away. We're just trying to create a equal balance. I'm very proud to be from Jersey, but I'm not a nationalist. I, I don't want this dispute to be settled with gunboats and threatening to cut off electricity that would put our hospitals in danger and preventing people from landing their, their sea catch at ports and so on. I want this, con this, this conflict, this dispute to be settled with diplomacy. I want both sides to get together and sort something out that works for both parties. Um, and the, the constant talk about war and conflict and, um, and so on isn't very helpful. And I would like Jersey and France to put this issue behind them and work on a solution that works for everybody, not just what French fishermen are willing to endlessly protest about. And that would require compromise, it would require agreement, it would also require the respect for Jersey's territorial waters, and above all, and I think this is most important about people deciding as to whether Jersey's in the right or wrong or so on, is recognise the good faith, the genuine good faith that Jersey has towards their French counterparts, uh, both in the government, which, to be completely frank, I don't always agree on, to put it mildly, and also in, um, in Jersey's fishermen, and also the local people who would be most at threat if France did decide to cut off all the electricity and for all the number of faults that the Jersey government does have, um, they have repetitively said that they um, have genuinely tried to act in good faith. The Jersey government has um, extended the amnesty period two or three times by this point and have engaged in direct talks with French fishermen over their grievances, uh, allowed them to protest in St Helia port and even went down to talk to them. Um, and what is sad is that the, the French government, I believe the, the French Minister of Fishing, um, said that we, we weren't allowed, we're not supposed to talk with French fishermen directly, which it's quite sad because that, that stifles the, the discussion, the bridge of communication that we're trying to establish and really suggests that the French aren't interested in negotiation, in compromise, in diplomacy. Um, I hope that isn't the case, but with their threats of cutting off electricity and this and uh, a number of other issues, it, it does seem like that. Uh, a lot of the time. Now it has been said that the uh, government of Jersey has not provided sufficient uh, evidence of ecological damage to the waters out there and going to be honest that's entirely possible. 
considering, as I said before, our government uh, isn't the best at communication, um, nor is its bureaucracy particularly efficient. Um, however, I, I still think that the issues raised are still worth um, serious investigation and consideration in the issue of whether GPS tracking be applied to the uh, conditions of licenses on uh, French fishing vessels. Now, even if the Jersey government had broken the uh, UK-EU trade agreement, which, as I said, I'm not a lawyer, and also that might have been the case, I'm not entirely sure. What I think is important is that the solution to that is to tell us that uh, we did something wrong and that we should fix it straight away rather than threatening to cut off all of our electricity which supplies our hospital and our schools and a lot of very basic necessities. It's, it's very jingoistic and it's very inappropriate and worrying that Western nations are resorting to this type of violent language to uh, get what they want. To summarise, if my um, rants have been confusing, is that from Jersey's perspective, obviously you would imagine that we wouldn't believe that we are in the wrong, but what you should above all understand is, and what I hope that you can understand, is that we live in an age where we're not taking a very good care of our planet and I would like the understanding of the outside world that Jersey is, well the Jersey people, I can't really speak on behalf of the government, are trying their best to preserve our lovely and beautiful island and that does apply to the sea and it is unfortunate that this ecological and environmentalist protection has become a sticking point in the battle, I suppose, between London and Brussels over Brexit, a, uh, a matter which Jersey had no say on and no, uh, no part in the vote on. So you don't have to completely agree with me, but just understand that here in Jersey, we're not all tax exiles. In fact, a lot of us um, who are traditionally from, traditionally from this island have quite far back reaching French roots and that we're lovely people and that we, we're just trying to uh, survive in the modern world just as much as the French counterparts, our French counterparts just over there, are trying to do also.